To illustrate interfaces, let's start with kind of a simple example, and then we'll do another example that's more of an application. So let's say we have a class interface for an animal, and in the interface we want to make sure that the animal, whoever, whatever we create subclasses of the animal, we're going to have something like speak as a function. So I'm making this pure virtual. This is a pure virtual function that makes this an abstract class, which is also an interface. And that means if I try to create an I animal object, it won't let me. The compiler will not let me create one because it has a pure virtual function. It is abstract. But let's say we're going to create a cat and it's of type I animal, it's going to implement this interface. And let's say that, um, I don't know what cats might have special, like void claw furniture. So we could have that, but if I don't define this, this is also going to complain at me. So the compiler enforces this interface. We, because I haven't made my own version of speak inside of cat, that means this is also an abstract class. To make it not an abstract class, I need to actually define it. Now, if you're wondering about the virtual keyword, I have more about that in my polymorphism lecture. So you'll check that out later or whatever, but it's not important at the moment, just that it's pure virtual. <laughs> so with cat, we'll just say meow. And now we'll just say, your furniture is destroyed. So the point of a subclass is to make something more specific, more specialized for some purpose. So we can build and run. We have cat animal, doesn't do anything. Animal.speak. And now it says meow. And likewise, if we did a different animal and it had whatever its own functionality was, we would be required to implement this interface. So we could say cat or not cat, dog animal2 animal2.speak. So then we get meow and woof. So that's just a really simple stripped down example of using a interface, but let's look at something maybe a little bit more uh, practical. Okay, let's say that we're going to make a document interface and then we're going to create several different types of documents. So let's say we have text document, and that's going to inherit from the document interface. And we can have something like a CSV document and, you know, whatever else. So with the CSV document, we'll usually take in a row of data, possibly. That's how I'm going to design this text document that can be more free form. We could also do like an HTML document and kind of go from there. So all these text documents, we're going to need to be able to open a file, close a file, and also write information to the file. So in the I document class, let's say we'll have a virtual void uh, open. We'll probably need a string file name and make that pure virtual. So we'll have to also include string. Okay. Um, they're probably going to have the same kind of close functionality, but we might as well just kind of specify it. And there'll need to be some sort of way to write information. So maybe we can make this an array of inputs where we have different words being displayed or the way that it's going to interpret that information, you know, however we can, uh, let's just say we, they're going to pass in a vector of strings. So text. So we'll include vector as well. So another thing we can do is I can create my OF stream object here. And then that will be inherited by the child classes. So each of them will need to have open, close, and write. So we'll do that. We're going to get rid of these. 
and keep those in there. So over here we have document.h being included. We can create a text document or CSV document or HTML document, but we cannot create an I document as a variable. And until we implement these, we're not going to get anything. So let's go ahead and do open. But let's say m out dot open the file name. Close m out dot close. And then for write with a text file, if we're just getting a string of text, let's go ahead and just output each item separated by a space, maybe. So um, let's say for auto. I don't know, txt in text. Text is already kind of plural, isn't it? Output txt and then a space, and then it will continue going on to the next one. So if I have a txt document, my text, my text dot open test dot txt, or we could pass in like a name, and then this could take care of handling that. So let's just say name. We can automatically append the end of the file type. And that can just be part of this class, the special subclass. Let me open up whatever folder I have to find it. I don't remember where I put it. I think it's here. Okay. So when I build and run this, we've opened the file. I can say my text dot write, and I'm just going to pass it in some information like hello world, how are you? Not that we would usually output text files that way, but this is just an example of how they can each interpret their own um, inputs. So this just outputs it with spaces in between. Okay, and then we can also implement these. So for the CSV document, we'll do the same open, except we'll pre uh, put the CSV at the end. I'm gonna change this to name. Doesn't doesn't have to, but we'll do that. Down here, we'll put HTML at the end here. The close functions, those will pretty much be the same. Actually, we don't need any input parameters. I guess I mistake that. Get rid of that. And here, and here. Okay. And then write. So each of them are going to have a string or a, a vector of strings passed in. So we'll have CSV document, my spreadsheet, uh, HTML document, my HTML or my web page. So let's say my spreadsheet dot open. We'll do test again because it'll create different um, extensions. And when we write some output, some information, if it's a spreadsheet, let's say we have our header, we could have like name, um, breed, meh, whatever. We have a, an array of things. Then maybe we have ein is a corgi or, and some other information like Luna is a cat. I don't know what kind of cat, just a cat. So we'll do that. Now down here for our write function, and we'll just make this empty for now too. In a CSV, everything is separated by commas, and then there should be a new line at the end. So we'll still use this sort of thing, except we'll use commas to separate each of the cells in the spreadsheet. And we'll make sure to have an end line once we're done. So we'll go ahead and run this again. The program output itself, Nothing really shows up. We can open this though with LibreOffice Calc or Excel if you have that on your computer. And now it looks like this. Or if we open it in a plain text editor, where did I put it there? There we go. It looks like this. So it is in a CSV format. And finally, with HTML as another example, um, let's say if we're going to write something to the page, we're going to say m out and we'll start a paragraph. And we'll have an ending paragraph, but then otherwise we'll basically just write everything with spaces in between. And with the open, you know, maybe we want to have some other information outputted like head, title, my page, 
we can just hard code some um, HTML in here, m out, body start, I'll do end line, and then over here before we close we'll say closing body. Now none of these I am calling close on, but uh, we should go ahead and do that. If we don't call close the output file stream, destructor will automatically do that for us, but it won't call this and close that stuff. So let's we'll go ahead and close. We'll run. I did not write any text to the thing, so we'll just use the same thing here. Build and run. So now with the test.html, we have hello world, how are you? If we look at this in our uh, plain text editor, it looks like a little web page. Maybe I should put new lines with each of these, but it basically formats that. So the idea is, you know, we have an interface for this document type, you know, files on the computer have a lot of things in common, like change days and times, uh, owner information, accessibility information. But then different file types have different formats and how they are loaded and used and all of that. So we can make a document interface to kind of define every document needs to have these sets of functionality. Usually the interface itself is specifically for the functionality. I believe in C Sharp, if you made a interface which is a actual feature of C-sharp, you couldn't put variables in it. I think that's the case, but I tend to do that anyway and use it as a base class of what's in common and then also the functionality that is required. You can also create functions inside the base class that are not pure virtual. And then whenever the text document version calls it or whatever else, then this will be called, this version will be called. So if we were in main, we could say my text.debug for any of these, and it's just going to call that function there. That could have more information, that could have functionality that doesn't change between each of the subclasses. But that's basically a really simple example of how that would work.